Hi friends, I'm so excited to go along on this adventure with you today. First, we're going to hear all about the different ways you can use STEM in, our, in your career from our friends at National Grid. Then we'll get our hands dirty with Mr. Dan as he walks us through a STEM activity. My name is Eric Fallon. I'm a relay tester for National Grid. A relay tester kind of makes sure all the puzzle pieces fit together. Uh, we do a lot of troubleshooting. Typically, we gotta go find a problem. There's a lot of print reading, a lot of different logic and settings we look through. We work with a lot of different departments, communicating between the engineers and the electricians. We're kind of somewhere in the middle of them. When I was growing up, I had no idea what I wanted to be. I knew I wanted to build things. I liked doing different projects. I always liked, I always wanted to know how everything worked. I wasn't afraid to jump into a project, even if I didn't know, because I would look it up, I would read books. And, uh, nowadays, you can watch videos on things. This kind of all started in physics class in high school, when our teacher showed us a video of these crazy linemen that would work out of helicopters, and they jump onto these big transmission lines. When I was in the line department, I really learned there's all kinds of different opportunities, different careers within the utility nobody tells you about. Everybody thinks, oh, you work for the electric utility, you're a meter reader or a lineman. But really, there's a dozen, probably more different fields you can work in within the utility. When things go wrong with the power grid, it, think of lightning. You know, electricity is like lightning going to ground, and it can be very, really interesting to watch, but it's also very dangerous. So when your power goes out, we get called, linemen get called, electricians get called, and we're often out in the middle of the night working, uh, trying to get your power back on, and that's a favorite part of the job for me. You feel like a hero when you get the people's power back on. We use STEM a lot in this job. Uh, we use a lot of math and technology. Any of your adding is subtracting, anything like that. You know, keep learning that, and you're gonna use it in this career. Uh, a lot of it you might not use in other careers. You might not think you need it. Uh, we, we use it all the time here. One of the things I like about this job is that we get a lot of change of scenery. Sometimes we're working in the city. Sometimes we're working out in the country. Sometimes we're working on new technology. Sometimes we're working on very old technology. So there's a good variety of what we deal with every day. Now, I'm a technician doing a very technical job, but really I'm just like you. I'm learning every day. Technology changes so fast, and you just gotta roll with the punches, take things one piece at a time, and eventually all the pieces will come together. Next up, we'll learn about the super cool robot dog. National Grid uses this robot dog to double check the security of different buildings so all the workers can stay nice and safe. Let's take a look. That was so exciting. Now we're going to hear from Mr. Dan, who has a super exciting STEM activity for us to follow along with. Hi friends, I'm Dan Walsh and I'm from Explorer More. And I love science and one of my favorite parts of this job is organizing the STEM Saturday events, which are every third Saturday of the month. And they're all sponsored by National Grid. And for STEM Saturday, we do a bunch of fun stuff. I plan a bunch of different science experiments and activities and we get to work on them all together. So for today, I'm sitting in Building Buffalo and one of my favorite parts about the whole museum is we have these PVC pipes that you can work with. And it's really cool because they all connect and you can build all different kind of uh, things with them. I've seen kids build whole chairs with these things. So they're pretty amazing. But for now, I actually have a story planned. So I'm gonna read Oscar and the Bird, a book about electricity. It's written by Jeff Waring. One day, Oscar saw a tractor standing in the field. He climbed up to look in the cab when suddenly, the windshield wiper started to move. Swish, swish. How did that happen, Oscar wondered. Bird flew down from her branch. 
Electricity is just making the wiper move, she said. You must have pressed the switch by mistake. What's electricity, Oscar asked. It's kind of energy that people use to help things move, make sounds, light up, or heat up, the bird said. Where does it come from? Oscar wanted to know. Bird hopped down to show him the engine. It flows through wires from this battery, she said. The battery has chemicals inside that makes electricity. It's a very big battery, Oscar said. And then there's the battery. It's a big battery for a big tractor, Bird said. Batteries come in all shapes and sizes. Even a tiny one can make electricity. And she told Oscar about some other machines that are powered by batteries. Together, these two small batteries can make a strong beam shine from a flashlight. This rechargeable battery has powerful chemicals inside that can make electricity strong enough to move a toy. This tiny round battery can keep a watch ticking for more than two years, and that's the tiny battery. The, this long, slim battery is powerful too, and light, just right for the machines you carry around and use a lot. Why doesn't the windshield wiper move all the time, Oscar asked. When the switch is off, there's a gap in the wires and the electricity can't get around the wiper, the bird said. When you press the switch on, the wires join up and the electricity can cross the gap and move the wiper. So it moves like this in a big circle. Up to the wiper and then back to the battery. Does everything in the tractor need electricity to work, Oscar asked. Some things need electricity, said Bird, like the lights, the radiator, and the wiper. The engine needs electricity to start too, but it needs gas to make the tractor move. Oscar looked up. Does electricity flow through those wires as well, he asked Bird. Yes, Bird answered. Does that electricity come from a battery too? Oscar asked. No, Bird said. It comes from a power station. It's going to the town so that people can light and heat up their homes. Why are there wires in the sky? Oscar wanted to know. So that they're out of reach and you'll be safer, Bird said. They carry lots of electricity and it would be very dangerous if it flowed through you. You should never touch a wire, said Oscar. And then, in the distance, they could see flashes of lightning. Lightning is electricity too, Bird said. There is a kind of electricity all around us, but most of the time we don't see it or notice it. Over the hill, the blades on the turbines were turning in the wind. Is electricity helping them move? Oscar asked Bird. No, Bird said. It's the other way around. The wind turns the blades and the movement makes electricity. Then it started to rain. Oscar and Bird rushed back to the tractor. Swoosh, swoosh. The wiper is wiping the water away so that we can see out, Bird said. Then let's not turn it off, said Oscar. And that's our story. Thanks for listening, friends. Well, friends, I don't know about you, but I sure learned a lot. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Keep learning and stay curious.